A long time ago, the Ghoul Realm barely escaped great peril. A large army of destroyers came from a neighboring universe. The creatures of the Ghoul Realm were no match for the powerful destroyers. Just when everyone had given up hope, a great fire swept over the realm, wiping out the destroyer's army. Several hundred years have passed, and the realm is threatened once again. That's one hell of an opening. Eat your heart out, George Lucas. Hello, everyone. This is Usually Dead. And yeah, I'm playing a Game Boy game. What the hell is wrong with me? Um, so this... <clears throat> from, from now on, I've really wanted to do LP projects that are new and original and I have not played before and therefore can have original reactions to. But this... Um, yeah, we'll let this run again while I do my monologue. Um, this is a game I most certainly have played before, but not in forever. As you can see by the title screen there a second ago, this thing was originally released back in 1990, um, and I played this on the Game Boy, like the original first generation Game Boy with the piss yellow dot matrix screen, uh, when I was in grade school, like when I was eight or nine years old. And that means I have literally not played this game for something on 18 years. Very nearly two decades I have not played this. And um, I wanted to try this because I recently became aware of a kind of sequel slash spiritual successor that came to this game called Demon's Crest on the Super NES, which I had never heard of. And I thought, well, hell, this might be fun to do kind of as a retrospective to see first off if this game would uh, hold up to a fresh modern perspective versus just the nostalgia factor, which really I, I barely remember what any of this game contains. Um, and then after that, depending on how things go, I may end up doing a second part of the LP of the Demon's Crest game, which came out after this, which I know nothing about because I never played it before. So let's skip all that. Um, so yeah, let's do this. And I'm not going to have any schedule in mind. I'm not going to have any release schedule or how long any video should be. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and see how things are here. An unknown army. Yeah. I think. So, one, the very basic thing that I do remember about this game on the Game Boy from forever ago is um, you play as a citizen of some netherworldly ghoul realm, a gargoyle by the name of Firebrand. And you, it's like a platformer thing with some RPG elements. It's very weird. Um, and I don't know where I am right now or who these dudes are who are talking to me. The king has been... Gwaha! They are very strong. So, like, are all these dudes just coming in here and dying repeatedly? Like, does my gargoyle self have a bunch of unshown corpses piled around my feet? Firebrand, return to the realm immediately. Before they close the dimension portal that leads you. So where is here, if I'm not already in the ghoul realm? I mean, this doesn't exactly look like normal human civilization. Yeah, this is a Capcom game. It's, it's a very old Capcom game. But, um, yeah, so you can see my basic abilities here. I can spit fire. And um, I I remember really liking this game as a kid because it had very, you know, incredibly fluid movement for what was available in the early 90s. Um, like, you know, you can see I can I have limited flying here. I've got, like, a wing gauge that depletes. Um, I can wall, I can wall grapple and wall climb like that and spit my fireball and vials. Pretty sure that's money. And then the J in the bottom corner is for my jump, which gets upgraded. A little sprite of me is for lives, like how many lives I have left. And that spark in the middle left there is my current weapon, which is just a basic fireball. So, um, now, uh, this, all this I'm saying here is coming back from... Yeah, that's not dangerous at all. Uh, it's coming back from memory. I, I played the shit out of this game when I was a kid, but beyond that, I, I don't remember very much about it, so we'll see how far memory gets me. That, I think, is vials. I think this is money. Yeah, see, I, oh, apparently that was worth two vials. Okay. Well, I, I remember really, really liking this game as a kid, but I don't remember all of the levels. The basic movement mechanics are coming back to me pretty fluidly, um, because... Really, it's pretty standard stuff for a platformer. The, you know, the flying and the wall climbing is pretty intuitive. Anybody who's ever played other Capcom games like Mega Man X will, you know, get used to it really easily. Yeah, this is the controls of this game were remarkably tight. They're very, very good controls, especially considering how young, you know, console gaming was at the time. That 
I'm pretty sure that heart over there is a life replenish, which I don't need, so I'm not going to risk going for it. It might be a one-up, but I'm not going to risk it, because I'll probably kill myself on the spikes we saw over there. Um, and of course, this is a Game Boy game, so... Hey, look at this. <laughs> Ghoul Klansman. <laughs> um, this is a Game Boy game, so of course there's going to be visual and audio issues all over the place, but, you know, if you don't like that, then you probably shouldn't be watching this. Is that worth getting? Oh, yeah, it is. It's hardly dangerous down here. Because this is like quicksand, but there's just a standard platform below it, so it's hardly, you know... Also, if the game seems a little bit slow and dreamlike... Um, oh, I got hit, goddamn. Uh, that's... Uh, the emulator is prone to slowing down while the recording software is running, so I kind of had to keep it at a constant frame skip of one, otherwise I couldn't do this at all. So it's not it's not unplayable by any means, but yeah, it's, it's going to look a little bit sluggish. What you're seeing right now is as bad as it's going to get, so if you find this acceptable, then yipty skip de doo I hope I can go the rest of the level without getting hit. I, I really don't remember what this game's difficulty curve is like, but when you remember this is like targeted at preteen kids back in the day, having like two hits on the opening level seems pretty unforgiving. Especially considering all these spikes all over the place. These little fireheads take more than one shot to kill. Yeah, and this it's got vertical sections, which is really neat because you can Ah, there we go. You hear that little item fanfare every time I pick up something? It's like, <laughs> you got a single heart. You're now king of the universe. I think this is a boss arena. Oh, yep, it is. Ow, my fuck! <laughs> yeah, I think I remember this thing, but I don't remember the optimal way to attack it. Oh, spit fire at it, just like everything else. Um, That's the portal, I think. Oh, yeah, just have your ass turned to me, and I'll just completely annihilate you. Whoa, the frame skip's really making the sprites hard to see. Yikes. I'm going to have to play conservatively here. I really don't want to die on my first level. Yes. Die, 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 die. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Ah! Don't breathe fire at me, please. Oh, cool. Killed him. First attempt, no less. Victory fanfare! Oh, I guess I just opened the portal. How nice. You passed through the dimension... Yeah, it was. Okay. And reached the ghoul realm. Which is this, apparently. Now, one way in which was, this was very weird for platformers of the day is it had an overworld, which I'm in right now. And the overworld had random encounters. That much I remember, which was very weird. Um, I forget if you get any like actual reward for it, but we'll find out, I guess, because I'm probably going to hit one pretty quick. Or... What's this guy doing here? Oh, that's right, and I also had, like, an adventure game style menu. Talk, use, level, and check. Let's use level. This is, yeah, it's my stat menu, basically. Items. Okay, whatever. How do I get out of this? Okay. And then, check. Can't find anything. Alright, whatever. Then talk. Who are you? You're not leaving here. Oh, it means you're gonna try to kill me. Hmm. So each of the... I guess that wasn't a random encounter, but... Um... Each time you encounter something on the overworld map, it, like, puts you into a little pseudo-level where, you know, ghoul clansmen walk back and forth and wait for you to kill them quite blithely. And then you get victory fanfare. What fun. Obtain. Oh, that's what you get. Okay. So you get money for overworld encounters. That's pre pretty RPG-ish. Let's talk to this guy. What, so you're just standing out here in the wilderness and, like, waiting for somebody to come kill you? Or no, these are probably sentries from, like, whatever external force had come to corrupt the ghoul realm that I live in. This game really doesn't have much of a story. It'd be foolish to expect one. What joy. Those houses over there, I'm pretty sure, is a settlement I'm meant to get to. Oh, there we go. First random encounter. With different types of enemies, no less. And now that's a pit down there, so I'm not going to fall all the way down there. Oh my, how difficult. <laughs> Spitting a beholder at me, how dare you. Got a giant open mouth grin on his face. Colon D as he's spitting fireballs out. <laughs> and here's our settlement. Yeah, so this is this is another RPG-ish thing about this game, is there's like a town, 
people you could talk to. If you find the essence of the soul stream somewhere in the realm, the wounded can be healed. I think it's like the equivalent of a sub tank essence of the soul stream. Firebrand, you finally made it. Yeah, so this is what is this like my hometown or with the talisman of the cyclone, a damaged body can be re Oh. Isn't that the same thing as the essence of the soul stream? Most of us have been defeated. Some who were revived are hiding here. Oh, not a very conspicuous place to hide. What's this? Can I use my check command on this? Oh, I have to be standing right on it, don't I? Oh, yeah, somebody just left money sitting in the side of the town courtyard. How nice. When they were attacked, the, the Baron, Baron, Jark, lost the gremlin stick given him by King Dar Darkoen. Okay. Jark is gifted with second sight. Seek his advice. Well, what does that mean? He has the ability to look at things twice? Doesn't sound really impressive. Blacklight. Even a resurrection spell can't help if you are touched by its darkness. This is like Castlevania II levels of confusion, what these people are telling me about. Let's go into some of the towns or houses and see what people have to say. Exchange eight vials for one talus. Oh, I'm pretty sure a... Oh, okay, a talisman is an extra life, if I remember properly. Um... What? <laughs> um... Let's see, how do I bring up my menu? Um, level... Oh, I guess I can't... Can I not hold more than two lives? I guess not. I have enough vials for it, but I guess I'll just save them. Maybe I'll get more capacity for it later on. I really don't remember any of this. <laughs> I mean, I I played the crap out of this game as a kid, but, you know, two decades is enough to make anybody forget anything. Who is this? We ghouls can be revived by chanting the resurrection spell. Oh, that's a save code, isn't it? I'll tell you the words of the spell. Never forget them. Yeah. I'll be using save states in the emulator. Not, not for multiple attempts, I will definitely not do that, uh, certainly not on camera, but um, just for when I quit and come back later, I'll use save states for that. More money, just left in the corner of somebody's house. How nice. This is the room of the Baron Jark. Okay, this must be the Baron. Talk. I am, I'm Jark. I am afraid I can't help you. Without my gremlin stick, my powers are very limited. If only I had it back. <laughs> he didn't ask you a question, Firebrand. Um, yes, I'll go get your gremlin stick. You'll do it? Great. God, this translation is shitty. Um, this is the fingernail of the specter. That's an upgrade item, I think. It increases one of my stats. When you have it, you will become light and be able to fly higher. Probably increases my wing powers, what that does. Alright, um... I think now this means I can leave and go tackle the first major dungeon, so let's go try that. Let's talk to this douchebag first. Help me. You aren't one of them, are you? Depends on who you're talking about, I don't know what you mean. I was so scared, our attackers went east. Very well. This is really more north than anything. Ah, another random encounter. Now, if these if these happen too frequently, I'm not... Oh yeah, that, in oh, that didn't increase my... Oh, it increased my jump. Look, I can jump higher now. Yeah, J2. Okay. Now, I'm not going to record myself doing every one of these random encounters on the world map. If these happens too much, I'll stop the record. Whoa! GJ! <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, if those random encounters happen too frequently, I'll just, like, stop recording and then start recording again when I get to where I'm going. Oh, sequencing. Okay, see, I couldn't have reached this ledge unless I had the jump upgrade. Okay. Why do I get the feeling that that fire is going to be an insta-kill, no matter how much health I have left? So let's just be cautious. I, I bet those fire pillars do, too. I'm not going to take any chances. No experimentation necessary. That was the whole level? That was the whole bridge? Okay. Alright. Ooh. 
ghoul clansmen with shields. If I remember properly, this means I can't attack them from the front. Yeah, okay, yeah. Have to attack him from behind. That's just really... Isn't that harder? Just kind of adds a level of annoyance. Yay. Let's go obtain this vial that somebody just left in the corner of a canyon. Oh, yay. I think I replenished the life that I lost. <coughs> in fact, let's find out if it did. I will take this extremely opportune opportunity to opportune opportunistically. Yeah, so I have two lives again. What fun! I should be able to do things without the need for congressional aid. Love that expression on Firebrand's face when he's breathing out a projectile. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to record too many more of these random encounters. It's going to get repetitious really fast. Talk. Up ahead is the palace of Dak Dakoran. That's the king dude. Oh, and you're not going to step aside and let me get in there, are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll just record this because it's going to take like two seconds. And I think there's another objective path kind of towards the lower right on the world map, so... I do remember some really awesome chiptunes from this game, but that could just be the nostalgia goggles speaking. I'm going to try to go at this with a really modern perspective. The Gremlin Stick? You are a stupid henchman of that Baron. I sealed that stick away in the big tower monster. What? God. I'm going to kill you guys just for being cryptic in your speech. Yeah. Alright. Go explore down here. Oh, that must be it. Alright, yeah. Sorry to make you watch this over and over again. I mean, it's, it seems like a lot of work to stop and resume the recording when it's like... The first dungeon is right in front of my face. Oh, and I got hit once. Lovely. I'm not going to die to you. Wasting my time. Rubbery. Okay. This, I believe, is the first major dungeon. Yep, different music, different scenery, textures, and everything. It's down here. Ah, more money. People just love to s seem to love leaving that crap around. Yeah, so far this game is not as hard as I seem to remember it being, but then again I was, you know, younger than ten years old and had the manual dexterity to match. Yeah, this is seeming like really standard platformer fare, pretty much. Yeah, forgive the choppy sound, that's the result of the one constant frame skip I have to do or I won't be able to record this at all. But again, it's a Game Boy game, so you're not really expecting super high quality sound in any case. Uh, being able to float is very nice, even if just for a short time. I would. Oh, I got a health restore just for leaving the level. That's nice. I thought I'd have to do this entire thing with just one hit. That is a moving platform I can grapple with. Okay. I think I'm supposed to hit the outside of this one. Yep, and then climb out the outside of the building. I really don't care about that talisman, or the vials, or whatever. I already have more money than I need, and I could just grind it up on the world map, so who gives a crap? Yeah, this is not that big of a deal. <laughs> I remember this being, like, nipple-twistingly hard when I was a kid, but... I mean, when you have these really nice movement options of, like, a good jump, and, you know, unlimited wall grappling, wall climbing, and limited flight... Oh, you get hit anyway. Good job, you do. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, I seem to have that kind of a curse. I talk about how easy something is, and then I get pooned. Alright, how far back did this set me? Oh, not far. Wait, oh, I'm going backwards, aren't I? Okay, let me pause the recording. I'll get back to where I was. Okay, this is where I died. It was on those spikes to the bottom and left you see in there. Please don't let those spikes be within my hitbox. And they're not, thank god.
Ooh, I think I feel a boss incoming. Yep. Now, if memory serves, this boss is something like, um... Remember in Super Metroid, uh, Dragon's boss room, how it had those, uh, electro turret things on the walls? This is like that, except the electro turrets just are the boss. There is no Dragon. If that's how his name is pronounced, I don't know. Don't hit me, don't... Oh, God. Yeah, I don't have enough wing power to really deal with that. I hope his health doesn't refresh every time I off-screen him. <laughs> ah. However, limited resources of the Game Boy mean I have to, like... Oh, good, okay, his health does not refresh. But I have to be on... Ah! Fuck! That was entirely avoidable. That was just me being a douche-tard. Alright, back in a bit. Okay, attempt number two. Let's hope UD is less of a dick dipstick here. Get the mouse off the screen. So, this is going to be weird. Apparently the greatest challenge here is managing the fact that my projectiles don't work if, uh, if they're hitting something off screen. So I have to, like, float there in midair while my projectile goes to hit. I realize that's a technical limitation, but kind of designing the game around that, I don't know. Because, look, I mean, there's no place I can be... Well, can I grapple on that ledge above? I don't think so. I mean, that wouldn't hit it. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter now. Not that hard, it's just kind of weird. That I, like, actually have to use my wind power to take, to overcome the Game Boy's rendering limitations. That's very strange. I mean, I guess if it weren't for that, this boss fight would be offensively easy, because these projectiles are not that hard to dodge, so... Okay, one left. Assuming there's not, like, some kind of a second form that comes up, which is entirely possible. I have no idea. I remember incredibly little about this game. Yeah! Die! Fuck you and all in the fucking fuck. And the music's completely butchered by the frame rate. Lovely. And now what? Oh, door opened up. Okay. You acquired the... Oh, cool. That was the MacGuffin that my Baron wanted to get. An incredible force is building in your... <laughs> well, dude, you know, no harm in gas. I mean, I'm sure gargoyles have to fart, too. Um, you have the power of the block... block... blockbuster. Oh, I think that's an upgraded weapon. Let's find out. Let's just hit one random encounter and see how it looks. And that'll probably be all that I do for this video. Come on. It's like when you don't want to, when you do want a random encounter to happen, they don't. Come on. There we go. All right, let's see. Yeah, I do have a new weapon. Okay. And it does absolutely nothing different. Oh, oh, except I can have more than on more on screen at once, and they're faster. That's neat. It's like I'm barfing up boomerangs. That's cool. All right. That'll be the extent of what I do with this video. Thanks for watching. We'll come back soon.